we used to have uh, like broiler chickens that we were keeping for. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and I remember being locked inside for a whole night and. Welcome to Development Dynamics, the conversation, storytelling, and reflection platform that Development Dynamics offers to leaders and practitioners who are doing social good, who are having social impact in and around the African context, uh, content continent. We are very glad this time around to be featuring one of the, my dearest people that I, I know and I've known for the last 10 or 15 years. Um, he's a leader of the present and a leader of the future. He has raised, when I say raised, I mean handheld from beginning to where people are, various individuals. He is um, director of two organizations, one at, as a non-executive director and the other one as the current director, which is Lepta Community and Madare Children's Education. He has also worked in the development space for a number of years with initiatives that he has co-founded and other initiatives where he has worked uh, either as an employee or as a, as a partner in various ways. He is a father, a husband, and also most importantly, an African man, John Ngari Ndorere. Welcome to Didi, Didi with Maxi, Development Dynamics. We are really glad to finally be doing this and um, really happy that you honored the invite, really humble that you get to spend time with us and our audience sharing uh, and reflecting back on your, on your journey. So Karibu Sana. Thank you for having me. We are super excited to have you and um, I've called you John Ngari Ndorere. I would like us to begin with with, with your roots, your farm yeah. foundations, so to call them. Yeah. <laughs> Where does uh, Ndorere hail from? So Ndorere, the, Ndorere the man hails from Nyeri, mm -hmm. uh, near Ab the Abadeas, mm -hmm. where he was born and raised. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he, he later moved to Nyandaro. Mm -hmm. uh, Moved in pursuit of a wife? Or in no, 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 Ndorere <laughs> moved to Nyandaro to follow his father, Aha. Mr. Ngare. All right. Who was working uh, as a rancher mm -hmm. um, in a in a white settlers land mm. in near the plains of Wanjohi. Wanjohi is in Nyandarua. Nyandarua. Yes. It, wait, just for contextualizing, is Nyandarua where Lakeipia is? Nyandarua is where Lakeipia okay. is. Lakeipia yeah. is the capital city of Nyandarua County. No, no, no. Mm. Nyandarua County, the capital city for Nyandarua County, is Nyahururu. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, there are parts of it that are in, in Laikipia, but most of Laikipia is in Nanyuki. So you guys are closer to? To both, um, we will call um, Nakuru the area, but uh -huh. also Nyahu Nyahururu okay. going okay. all the way to. So you use to, a, a, A104 yes, while going, when you're going to, home. Okay, yes. all right. All right. Yeah. So he moved there uh, to follow his father? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, who had gone ahead to marry another wife, mm -hmm. uh, and he had left everyone else back in Nyeri. Ah. But my father said, no, I have to take my, my mother yeah. and take him to his husband. Oh, nice. Basically, and yeah. that's how we ended up saying we go to Nyandaro for shags. Yeah. But originally, it was supposed to just be Nyeri. Nyeri. Yes, because okay. we are all Nyerians mm. in all aspects. I, I think it said that every Kikuyu person is from Muranga. <laughs> so, so before you claim Nyeri so much, yeah. you are probably more originally from Muranga than you guys <laughs> It's just that I don't have relocated. the history of Muranga. But I also know that in my lineage, there was a Kimutai at some point uh -huh. uh, who had come in as a farmer and married a Kikuyu girl mm. there. Mm. That's where our family okay. basically originated from. So the, in that in that lineage, there is a Kimutai, there yes. is a Ngari. No, before Ngari, there is a Njiru. There is like... Layers. There, there are six other oh, wow. uh, people I would call great-grandfathers. Yeah. Uh, and then my gr my grandfather and then your grandfather myself. is Ngari. Yes, Ngari. And then now Ndorere being my your dad, father. And then me. So um, is it in is it in Yahur, Nyandarwa that mm -hmm. he met Mrs. Ndorere? My mom? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Mm. They actually met where I was born and raised. Oh, so they okay. Let's go. Let's continue with the roots <laughs> then. So yes. what was your father doing there? after he followed your grandfather? Uh, he was actually teaching in Jambine. Mm -hmm. he, was a, uh, he was first a teacher mm. uh, because he had really done well in his primary school. Mm. 
he was i think number one mm. in his division in tetu mm -hmm. yeah in nyeri and tetu then, oh yeah yes okay mm -hmm. so he was number one mm. so when he came to nyandaro he actually went to jambine as a teacher mm. he even taught my like their last bonds mm. my uncle and my aunt mm. in the same school mm. and then he he stopped teaching mm -hmm. for one or two reasons he moved into uh moved into he he was just doing different things he went to the coast mm. to voy as a sisol uh harvester mm -hmm. and keeper mm -hmm. and then later on he moved into construction work mm. yeah he, first as a carpenter mm. and then mason mm. and then as a as a foreman still in mombasa no no he came in back nairobi. to nairobi yeah. mm. and that's when he he met my mom okay yeah so um a very illustrious career for him as yeah. to, to speak i mean different things mm. uh, both as a handyman but also as a teacher as as a as a lead. crafter mm. and as a lead yeah. um what what things about the stories that you've had about him mm. do you connect with the most right now um i will say the first story that i connect with the most about him that i see as a parallel also in our own family is mm -hmm. that uh, my dad never went to high school mm. just just primary school and he mm. went mm. straight to teaching yet he was very educated yeah and he mm. taught like the likes of pisika guthi oh. remember him okay. yeah he was his student at some point mm. um so one of the things i relate with the most with him is that he was self taught mm. mainly mm. that's how he went into construction and he was doing really really good buildings mm. like mm. his buildings i think are still the standard mm. in terms of uh, you, you remember back then we didn't have like building engineers and all yeah. he was the engineer yeah. he was the architect yeah. he was the the planner the, the planner surveyor. the surveyor he mm. was everything mm. uh, you can imagine mm. just that kind of trust yeah uh, from someone else to give it to him yeah. i think he was really self taught mm. very uh, determined mm. and i also think he was really a clever man mm. intelligent in all ways absolutely and he basically carried his his experiences with him everywhere he mm. went mm. he wasn't cowed by anything mm. yeah and so he meets your mom yeah mm -hmm. so they they met in madar mm -hmm. um because my mom was raised in madar mm. and and so her, her, her origins are there like no, no my mom was born in um, in moranga mm -hmm. but then he, he was raised in madar because my grandma was working in marikiti Ah so she was like an importer of bananas okay. and distributing it everywhere mm. else mm. but she was living in Madare because it was close to mm. Marikiti mm. Makes yeah. sense yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, and that's where he, he was basically taking care of them mm. but the, my mom is a last born mm -hmm. oh. so the rest had already grown yeah. and they were taking, like they were raised in Moranga before yeah. they came yeah. to Nairobi mm. yeah and my grandmother was really really busy trying to amass as much as mm. she could mm. And my dad was just there hustling mm. in different construction sites mm. uh, and that's where we met mm. uh, they, they met they basically met. Mm. yeah mm. and that's where we we were born and raised so when you say we how many are you we are six so of the ndorere kids you're yeah. six yeah we are six mm -hmm. i'm the fourth born aha uh -huh. yeah a family of so three boys three girls oh that's a good question yeah mm. and i'm still glad that my dad and mom are still here with us that's that's good yeah long live the ndoreres yes the 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 the, the fourth born mm -hmm. is uh, uh, do you have elder brothers or sisters i have two elder sisters mm -hmm. and well our first born is is a yeah and then behind you uh, a girl and a boy and whom you're looking at who happens to be our very able uh videographer and editor solo <laughs> solo yeah. whom the credits always roll with his name so yeah. that's that's really amazing that um th this story is being told we're all excited yeah <laughs> for it um yeah. so uh, how was so if they met in uh, matare is mm. that where you also born andre yes yes mm -hmm. um so my mom is a bit younger than my dad mm -hmm. they have like a 20 year oh, age yeah. gap yeah um and so it has been always interesting to mm. see this old man with this young kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh that's when they met and uh, we started uh, getting uh, the children mm -hmm. that's when they started getting the children mm. in a very nice order of two years two years two, two years. years apart yeah two years apart mm. 
which is nice because it means we are all relating and we are all friends yeah. to some extent. Exactly. And we fight a lot, but we, mm. we love each other. We eat together. Yeah. We used to do all these things together. What are your most fond memories of, of, your, of your very early childhood? Uh, I would say is uh, just being able to... We used to eat a lot of ugali almost <laughs> daily. And uh, we learned how to cook ugali quite early. Mm. Uh, and so the, the fondest memory of us is being able to put the whole meal on the table mm. so that we can all eat together in one yeah like in, in one, one senior. yeah in one senior mm. yeah yeah, mm. yeah that, that that is really something that i sometimes miss all six of you children all, all six of us plus, plus the parents, the parents. Mm. that's how it used to be mm. yeah when mm. we were growing up mm. and and we could tell that we are a big family mm. in that way and mm. they made sure that we have a, we had a table yeah. in the middle surrounded by chairs yeah. so we can that's really nice. To eat well. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but there are some of the children who would be eating more and at the expense of the others. I would say myself yeah. <laughs> and my big sister who was playing football. Oh, wow. Uh, she's called Lucy. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, uh, she's among us the first group of girls who left Kenya to go to Norway to play in the Norway Cup and win. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and then later joined the Harambe Stars. Oh, fantastic. Uh, female I did not team. know that about Lucy, really nice. Yeah, mm. uh, she, so she was a pioneer in that mm. in that field. Mm. Uh, and so together, her and myself we used to eat a lot. <laughs> we all had different reasons why we were eating a lot. You as was? Uh, she played football, I was smoking a lot of bang and <laughs> oh, 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 okay. so I was constantly at, angry. Uh, wait, I think we moved from early childhood. At early childhood, you at early childhood. How young? So, um, so my story is a bit interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, even just sitting here is quite interesting, even for my own family, mm. because like in in my own family, I started doing a lot of bad things mm. quite early. Mm. Like I started um, sniffing glue mm -hmm. at the age of four. Wow, that's yeah. really early childhood. Yeah, with my cousin, mm. uh, who we are named, it's the same name. Mm -hmm. um, so we started sniffing quite early. Mm. And then later on, at I would say at around age 9, 11, 10, we started smoking. He's, he didn't smoke, but I continued with a group of my friends. I'm smoking cigarettes? No, not cigarettes. Mm. I've, I've never smoked, smoked cigarettes. I was just smoking bam. Yeah. I, I, I can imagine a four-year-old, you, you're saying you're sniffing glue? Yes, sniffing glue. The, the, the little experience I have about sniffing glue, I, I think I would see it from people in a, in a bus, in, a, in like those Kenya bus or metro or something, mm. where we are talking about the glue that would be used for... Repairing shoes. You yeah. sniff that and it gives you a high. Yeah, it gives you a very good high, mm. actually. You don't feel pain. Uh, you can do anything, you can eat anything, you don't care about anything, so you're just having fun. But at four, why, why, how did it get introduced to you at four? Um, so me and my cousin used to just spend a lot of time together, mm. and there was of course older boys mm. within the same community who were already doing Into it. Into that, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it, was, it was first my cousin who mm. gave it to me mm. while we were swimming in Madari River. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because we used to go after school. Because uh, uh, where I used to go to school and our home, there was a river in between. Mm. So we used to swim after cl after classes in the river. This is I'm imagining this is like at pre primary. Yes. So you're going to school, crossing a river, swimming mm. in the river, which is a whole story yeah. <laughs> by itself. Yeah. And and there is exposure to older people who are you know, uh, bringing these kinds of, is that, is that what you'd ordinarily find in, in the Matari community? That is quite common where older kids introduce younger kids to different kinds of things, mm. different kinds of experiences, uh, different kinds of, like they will inspire them in different ways based on what they are, mm. they are doing. Mm. And so that was a norm. Did you take a liking time. to it? I wouldn't say a liking per se, I would say it's more of, we are doing it as a group. Mm. So it's not, it's like, this is a social mm. thing that we have to do together. Mm. Mm. So it's, it wasn't really like, I like it. Mm. That's why it was easy for me to stop because I never really liked ah, it. Okay. It wasn't an issue of likeness, mm. but it was an issue of, mm. I want to hang out with these people. Mm. This is what they are doing. Mm. That's why I used to do it. Wow. That's mm. a, an interesting childhood mm. uh, already just that part. But mm. I wonder 
what else do you remember about i mean you remember about how you did together mm. then you you know through influence you took on to these other things but what are the what are the other memories that you have of um, of growing up um so i would say two things mm -hmm. um especially in like primary school mm -hmm. level i'll say uh, my mom left mm -hmm. left us mm -hmm. and went to stay with my grandma mm -hmm. uh, that was like very bad for me mm -hmm. because i was when she left i was in class four mm -hmm. i was very young that's what i i was very young you are less than 10. yes mm -hmm. basically i was around 10 like mm -hmm. Mm. And I had to wash my clothes mm. because my big sisters and mm. brothers didn't mm. do that mm. <laughs> for me. <laughs> so I had to wash my clothes mm. quite early mm. and I felt like this is unfair. Mm. That's what I always felt mm. because my smaller brother mm. was there, mm. his clothes were being taken <laughs> care of. My sister, yeah. my smaller sister, her clothes were being taken so you're the care one of. Who... So I was, they, they, they deemed me a, a bit older so you yet, have to take care of yourself so yet you're a middle child i'm a middle child so i'm expecting some favors from my older siblings but these are you are in the bottom three they're yeah. not realizing <laughs> that they, the top three so exactly. they should do for the bottom three Ex equal things eh? exactly <laughs> so um so that that was one thing that happened my mm. mom left mm. and we used to visit her during the holidays but she wasn't there mm. when i was doing you know, normal studies mm. and all that mm. Uh, the other memory will be that my dad was really, really present. Mm. E even though my mom wasn't there, mm. my dad was really there. Mm. Um, and two things he did for us, he made sure that we were well fed. Mm. Maybe not clothed, mm. <laughs> but mm. we were really, like we, we ate very, very well. Mm. And we were even extremely generous to our neighbors mm. and friends of mine who, mm. who didn't have, who couldn't get lunch or mm. who, who couldn't get dinner. Mm. Uh, so they could come and join us. Mm for for these meals mm. so we always felt loved mm. in that way mm. but also my dad forced us to go to church mm. quite early on mm. so in as much as i was doing these other things mm. there was always a balance mm. yeah that mm. i know i know about god mm. i know about what god can do for me mm. i know about what god wants for me mm. but i am still doing these things because mm. i was still I, I still basically live in this environment yeah. where these things are the norm yeah yeah um, so that was a really good balance. Mm. When I, I look back, I always think that that was really pivotal for me mm. in primary school because mm. I already started, started thinking about my future mm. quite early on. Mm. And speaking of primary school, yeah. uh, what are your schools from pre-primary to primary? So I went to Redeem Gospel Church. Mm -hmm. They used to have, uh, but initially I went to Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a children's home, mm. but they used to have a re really nice school. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was like, you're not paying anything to go there. Ah, so that's okay. where I went first, mm. and then I went to Redeem Gospel Church Madare. Mm. They used to have a, a Sunday, uh, uh, basically a preschool, mm -hmm. kindergarten, kind of. Mm. And then once I finished uh, studying there, I went to Madare, mm. Madare Old mm. Primary School, mm. where I did all the eight years. Mm. Oh, from class one through to class eight. Through to class eight. Yeah, through mm. to class eight. Mm. And I was always like number one two or three mm. mainly number one mm. yeah so I, I was always a i knew i'm a brilliant kid mm. how yeah. was your time in school other than books and um, um so i will say i i enjoyed being in school mm -hmm. for many reasons that, that, that's yeah, i enjoyed being in school for many reasons mm. especially just the fact that i was in school with my friends from mm. the same community mm. <laughs> that was really nice because we could we, we had stories that mm. could extend between Monday to Sunday. Mm, and right. and because we are spending time with the same same people all mm. the time. Mm. And it it helped me basically have friends from the whole Madare region. Yeah. So not just one. Which area. is large. Eh? Yeah, it's it's very big. Because mm. you're talking about several vi villages. Mm. And I had friends in all these mm. villages. So mm. I could go in to all these villages and, and feel those, at home. Yeah, and feel at home mm. and know that people know me. Mm. Yeah, mm. like friends of my sisters, friends mm. of my brothers. Mm. So I always felt safe in Madari, regardless mm. of where I was mm. at whatever time. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. I so always, yeah. There was a socializing. Mm. What were you very good at in school? In school, I, I would say English, mm. uh, um, the written, spoken, mm -hmm. mainly because I wasn't really, we weren't, we weren't really talking a lot of Speaking English. Speaking it most, yeah. Yeah, mm. but uh, I was really good at compositions mm. and just comprehension mm. and grammar all mm. those things mm. i loved uh, uh we did art during you did my art time in school okay and mm. home science mm. and i loved that mm. and i got you an know, interest in we're talking fine art or, or no no just the basic mm. art and craft okay. in primary school mm. so i did that and i enjoyed that before it was removed mm. just before <laughs> yeah. we did the exams so 
mm. but I, I I had already gotten an mm. interest in it. And home science as well. And home science mm. as well. Knitting, yeah, cooking. knitting, yeah, mm. cooking, mm. baking, mm. those kinds of those things. Those are good things, yeah. yeah. And some agriculture here mm. and there. They have reintroduced it to the CBC, the, 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 the current CBC, but as very different things. <laughs> yeah, but I still think they're important in yeah, terms of very, how a child needs yeah, to grow. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Your so what from what I'm from what you're saying so far, what I've gathered is um, you are in your home. Com- so you're first of all, you know, in a loved home. Like yeah. You're feeling loved. Yeah. Uh, mom is, mom has probably um, left to back to her mother and then your dad, mm. you know, is ensuring you and your siblings are finding your way. Yeah. You have this um, other cousin that you're working with yeah. <laughs> to do the naughty and notorious. Yeah. You, you also have... Um, things that are happening in school and in the whole community you're you're you're, you're sort of finding your way mm. as a, as you break into adolescence mm. and 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 uh with the kind of experience you've already had as yeah. a child yeah. what are your reflections especially of your early adolescence so i remember um making a lot of decisions mm-hmm. when i was going to class age okay you are around 13, 14? Then? Yeah, around 12. Mm. I decided not to continue smoking or doing okay. any other drug. Mm. I just decided. Mm-hmm. I, I never felt, I, ne- I, I don't think I got addicted at any given point. Mm. I just used to do it because mm. people, everyone else is doing it. Mm. Not because I like it and I want to continue showing that I'm showing up for them mm. and I'm leading them, mm. other, even at that particular time. So mm. I can't not do mm. the things that they are doing. Mm. So I remember making that decision quite early on mm. when I decided, no, I, I would like to have a different kind of life. I mm. don't know how, what that looks like. Mm. What I know is I would want to follow the footsteps of my father. Mm. And so what I did initially was to start just drawing houses. Mm-hmm. I used to do a lot of like nice houses. Mm. Um, and then one of my class teachers mm. called Mr. Minor mm. was teaching us GXC. Mm-hmm. That geography. <laughs> geography, history, and, and civics. civics. Mm. Yes, mm. he actually bought my book. Mm. Said, "No, I like this book. Let me mm. take this money." Mm. It was like fifty shillings, but mm. <laughs> it was a, a really uh, big confidence mm. uh, booster, booster mm. for me in terms of my abilities and mm. what I can do mm. at that particular time. And the other thing I remember saying is that I, I still want to continue doing church mm. as much as possible. Mm. If I have a chance, I'll still go to mm. church on Sunday. Mm. Now I'm not forced by anyone. Mm. I, I, I just want to go. Were there circumstances that were leading you to make those choices? Or was it just... So innate? at that time, mm. there, were, there weren't any circumstances. Mm. It was just like an awareness in my mm. head that I want something different mm. from everything else that mm. I'm seeing mm. and from everyone else mm. who's doing whatever it is that they are doing. Mm. But just before that, my age 12, mm. uh, around age 11, mm. something happened mm-hmm. um, where I, I tried I mixed drugs mm. and I remember I, I removed all my clothes <laughs> because I was so high and I was running in the field while my sister was practicing with her friends and her teammates mm. and just shouting uh, just shouting different things what concoction was that <laughs> no just the the combination of glue uh, basically glue and uh, bang and weed mm. basically that was something else mm. yeah so, so I was extremely extremely high and they had to like buy milk for me so I can cool down and I slept mm. under a tree mm. we used to have a lot of trees in Malaria mm. back then mm. not anymore <laughs> mm. but I slept under a tree until they finished and then we went home and I remember when I was a bit sober I asked my sister not to share this information with my par- with my parents mm. and uh, she still she didn't share this information with my dad, but she told my mom. And she was expecting that my mom will, under, will not tell my, but my mom immediately told my, my dad about it. Mm. Now, and, you, uh, as a parent, now you understand. Now I understand. It is what it's is important. expected. It's important <laughs> that uh, husbands and their wives share information <laughs> yeah. as much as I, possible. Of their children. Especially. Exactly, about what is going on mm. with, their, with their children so that they can mm. better take care of them. Yeah. And I remember I was locked in. Uh, we used to have uh, like broiler chickens that we were keeping for. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and I remember being locked inside for a whole night, and and in the morning. As punishment. As punishment, and 
yeah it's punishment because it has happened it had happened already many many ah. times mm. uh, um and my dad used to beat us like with like a strong strong whip i had mine it had my own name <laughs> everyone had had, had their own mm. my mistakes were very big and uh, so yeah. i had like a very strong strong <laughs> whip that he used to beat me with mm. so i was already used to mm. being whipped mm. because of these other things mm. um but th- that night i had to rethink mm. because I, was, i slept with a, what do you call it a chicken mm. and they had there was like these things we used to call them guya or something oh those things yeah, yeah that uh, yeah i forget the name so they ate yeah. me the whole night oh, and then boy. in the morning when i woke up mm, my dad asked me to, re- mm. to remove my clothes only mm. my and remain my under mm. pants mm. gave me two jugs of water to drink mm. you know he was still thinking i'm, I'm not sober mm. so he wants to sober me up so mm. that he can beat me now mm. so two jugs of water and then being whipped mm. outside where everyone else is seeing what is going on wow in the morning so i always just i was basically piggy banking on that mm. experience mm. also when i was thinking about mm. what kind of future i want to have your life decisions yeah exactly mm. yeah though i had st- kind of just stopped doing it as much as mm. yeah mm. i lost so many school uh, pants um because of being high <laughs> i used to walk naked <laughs> oh my goodness yeah, you're that guy yeah yeah like i kept on losing my clothes yeah yeah when i was oh high oh my god yeah oh, was it unique to you or or like in your family like was that unique to you yes everyone else in my home was really oh, good was than, so bad I yeah mean. yes other than my older brother who mm. had some issues with drugs mm. but you like, I, and there. he started very old mm. doing those things mm. yeah but i started very young which is quite interesting Youngster. everyone else thought i was mm. like a gone case <laughs> and they weren't expecting a lot from from me yeah yeah in terms but nonetheless in school you're still performing well which is also an interesting for everyone because mm. they're wondering how comes this guy who's always in these problems and mm. these troubles and mm. all these things mm. why is he, is he why is he still getting all this mm. It's not a lot of uh, when you talk about the results themselves. Mm. It's not a lot. Mm. So I'm a fast amongst failures. <laughs> But I, I'm still a fast. The equals are yeah, yeah. Are, are are all okay. Yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um so how do you perform for your grade class 8? So so after I've changed my mind and started behaving a little bit uh, better. I, I didn't get a lot of like I was above average in mm. terms of Mm. what i got at case mm. mm-hmm. and so i couldn't i didn't have many options for high school mm-hmm. but also i still was determined mm. so um something to note i'm the fourth born but i'm the first person to go to high school in my family uh-huh. yeah, and finish mm. yeah because my 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 big sister tried and mm. uh, she came back after the first school term <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, i'm i'm the only person who, mm. who who continued yeah and finished high school how was your high school My high school was and which one was it? I went to St. Teresa's Boys mm-hmm. just across the mm-hmm. road from Adare. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I went to St. Teresa's Boys is because my dad wanted me to go to a very like a close mm-hmm. a school that is nearby mm-hmm. so he can easily come oh, for in case of anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wants to show up mm-hmm. and discipline me in front of people. He's mm-hmm. used to doing that at this particular time. For, for you especially. Yeah. Mm. But one of the reasons why I was uh, I made that particular choice is also because most of the people in my community weren't really going to high school. Mm. So I'm not sure if it was a choice for them or it was just as a circumstances. Mm. People didn't have enough to take their, their kids to high school, mm. but I made that decision. Mm. I didn't know what I was going to get mm. in high school, but I knew I wanted to Mm. to go to high to, school to still have the education um mm. so when i told my parents this news mm. they weren't really expecting it mm. they, they, it wasn't coming from them mm. that I, i should go to high school mm. that's a, also one of the mm. I, I, i will call it an interesting thing mm. for me because mm. you know i made that choice and mm. i told them i have to go mm. and then that, then they started making the mm. plans for me mm. to actually mm. go you placed a demand on something that was not ordinary exactly you know in, in your family context yeah mm. and then the other unfortunate thing is when i made that particular demand it was uh, um during close to the transition mm. where we are, we are moving from moi to kibaki right and kibaki when kibaki came in mm. there was a lot of regulations around the building 
the building industry. Mm. So my dad couldn't really continue to be a, mm. becoming a foreman without the necessary documents and mm. licenses. So he had to kind of just retire mm. at that particular time. Mm. But then he was also diagnosed with a lot of um, body issues like mm. blood sugar was mm. high, he had blood pressure, mm. he had diabetes, mm. he had all this like mm. a concussion of different diseases that showed up at the mm. same time. Mm. And so he had to leave Nairobi. Ooh. Yeah. Not immediately because now they had to do an exchange with my mom. My mom has to come back to take care of us. My dad has to to go back, uh, mm. to go to Shags basically mm. so that he can take care of himself. Mm. Um, and so he gave me 9,000 shillings that mm. he had mm. saved up until that particular point. Mm. I mean, this is your money for school fees. But I don't have anything else. I was also supposed to traditionally get circumcised because I had finished class eight mm. and they didn't have money for that plus my school fees mm. <laughs> so there, there was also a delay in that so mm. i went to high school without getting circumcised until mm. april mm. after i had joined then they had to look for money so mm. that i can mm. continue but yeah you need to prioritize with what was there yeah, exactly mm. so so i went to high school in i remember in march in march instead of in Jan, end of january mm. like mm. everyone else mm. um because I had to look for like shoes, like mm. uniform, bags, bags, books, yeah. all these things that mm. they needed from me, mm. which was like a tall order mm. because I had to like really do a lot. I had mm. to visit my cousins, mm. look for different mm. uh, shirts. Mm. <laughs> if it's the blue shirts, I had to look for a cousin who had a blue mm. shirt so they can give it to me. Because mm. the sweater I had to buy in school mm. because mm. it had the school the logo. Mm. Yeah, so it, was, it wasn't it was an easy mm. process just going to high school. Mm. But even then, when I joined high school, in that particular first school term, mm. um, I was still number three in my mm. class. Mm. So I was excited. Mm. And I said, regardless of what is going on, mm. I have to persist. Mm. And I did. Mm. Um, and I, my mom came mm. and she started doing different things. Mm. So she used to like peel potatoes so that she can have extra income. Mm. So she can pay for my school fees. Mm. And she did that almost the entire time I was in school. Mm. But it was never enough. Mm. So I used to spend more time at home than me. In school. So I don't really look at high school as as an experience. Mm. Because I wasn't really there a lot. Yeah. When things uh, when people are going for trips, I wasn't there. Mm. I couldn't afford to go for any trip. Mm. I never attended any set book. Mm. Uh, in school. Mm. I never attended any activity in school mm. because mm. I couldn't afford mm. to go at mm. that particular time. So my high school was, uh, and I was, I was still above average in terms of the grades I was still getting. Yeah, because yeah. mm. I, I, I would say being in class for, for let's say, f five days out of ten, mm. I still understood everything in the five days mm. I was in school. Mm. Though I couldn't do anything about the, yeah. the extra five days I wasn't in school. Mm. Yeah, so that that was my high school experience mm. mainly. Not, not a very memorable one, should you speak? Yeah. But do you have any? Um, is there any incident, or not incident negatively? Just are there? Is there any particular memory of, of of the four years in yes. school? Yes, um, it, it isn't a really good one, mm -hmm. but it's one of those that also was very instrumental in who I ended up becoming. Because uh, I remember in, when I was in Form 1 mm -hmm. that whole year, mm -hmm. a lot of my friends had joined gangs. The, the friends gangs. that we, mm -hmm. we cleared primary school together mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. um, and so I remember very clearly that almost every Friday afternoon or Saturday we were burying someone mm -hmm. for almost an entire year. Mm -hmm. So I lost 90% of the people wow. I went to primary mm. school with mm. during that particular and you're seeing, one year. You are seeing them, they, they, they are... They're being killed. Eh? They have passed on because they have been shot. Yes, because mm. uh, they started basically mm. that life of crime. Mm. And they are just 14 year olds, mm -mm. 13 year olds, not even... Mm. Not even 18 or 19 mm. or what we are used to. What did that do to you, did it? So what, what happened is, that was quite common for me. Mm. So I like I, the, it wasn't traumatic mm. in a way, but I, was, mm. I started thinking about my small bro mm. and his friends. Mm. He used to hang out with like six or seven boys his mm. age mm. all the time. Mm. So while I was in high school, I started, I started thinking about him a lot. Mm. He's talented, he's already dancing in church, he's mm. doing different things. Mm. And I was thinking, no, how can I make sure that my bro who's growing in this community mm. doesn't join 
the same uh, criminal gangs mm. and all that mm. i remember i didn't do anything specifically at that time because i was still very young mm. but i thought no when i clear high school that's the first thing i want to mm. i like to look for a solution mm. for that mm. however it should come however mm. it will be yeah and the other thing that happened during that time is the same year a friend of mine called Steve mm. Karethi mm. uh we used to go to the same church mm. uh he made he he did a sermon mm. now at his church and he was talking about the father that god has called us as kings and priests mm. and i thought ah oh, okay this makes sense mm. this looks nice mm. looks like something i can apply in the bible mm. so i've been called as a king mm. i don't like preaching i don't like being in church mm. so king looks nicer looks <laughs> better so I don't know i want us to do something about it i, mm. I was hanging out with some people in church also mm. at that particular time mm. so we did with we, we formed a group we, we used to call ourselves or falme or falme or falme and we used to basically rap mm. and uh, do reggae mm. uh, raga basically mm. so we, we we started uh and then my name was johnny king mm. which was really mm. <laughs> that's where j king comes from that's where j king basically mm. comes from mm. which is what i call myself up until today because mm. i was able to get like I, i was able to understand that god had a specific reason and mm. purpose f- for making me mm. and that was quite uh, like an eye opening eye opening mm. in terms of so this what i'm used to seeing as um, as inspiration mm. in the slum is these are older kids mm. who are criminals who are dressing very well mm. who are dating every woman that you would want to date mm. who are living in these nice houses they mm. have nice things basically mm. and that's what inspired us or matter to drive us mm. from the same slum wow uh, that was our inspiration mm. but now i get to see oh okay there's there something special right? yeah i don't have to live that life mm. i don't have to do that but i didn't know what i mm. wanted to do mm. at that particular through time. just one teaching one teaching mm. quite eye opening mm. yeah mm. Okay. Um based on you know what your father the discipline that your father did but also based on your own life um what happened to some of the people that you know to your cousin and the people in school who this was their life. So um this is something I wanted to mention also mm-hmm. that um, we can never never underestimate the value of having like a male figure in your life. Mm. Um because very specifically i would say um the difference between me and most of my friends was that at 7 pm i had to be in my house mm. they didn't have to because no right. one was coming to ask them to go into their homes mm. they didn't have dads mm. present mm. but my dad was present so whatever it is they started learning mm. in the dark with no guidance mm. is what cost most of them to actually perish while i was in the house with my dad and my siblings mm. Yes being beaten mm. for something that he had I had done during the day mm. but he's still there mm. and he was very he was very strict mm. but he was very loving mm. um and he tried a lot in terms of like I, I when I started uh, like sniffing blue with my cousin my cousin mm. never stopped because mm. it was just my cousin and my aunt mm. and my aunt wasn't really that uh, strong disciplinarian mm. and then where he was she was living mm. everyone else was just sniffing glue mm. in the same community mm. they kind of just they, like they, they they hadn't really given up but they didn't know what to do mm. about it mm. and my cousin ended up he, he went to approved school he, he he left approved school he continued sniffing glue uh we used to go to Sicily together to collect uh, like uh, garbage and throw it so that we can get the five shillings so that we can go and buy glue together mm. and i used to just do it so i can get money mm. he, he 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 had to do it because he wanted to stay in the streets mm. didn't want to go back to school mm. he didn't want to, to do anything basically mm. in his life mm. right now my cousin can't even walk because he uh he has been like vehicles has amputated uh, yes mm. ha, has uh, yeah many many times mm. both his legs uh, kind of are just boneless like i have the boneless mm. like it. he can't <laughs> walk mm. basically Wow. and he can't even talk well mm. so he, he has lost a lot of memory um and that's what basically has happened mm. in the community for a lot a lot of young people mm. who mm. didn't end up growing up and becoming criminals who mm. still ended up becoming um dying basically mm. and i escaped that life mm. just because there was a presence in my life mm. a presence that was really pulling me yeah. and showing me love mm. and showing and still disciplining tough me. love 
it, it was really tough love mm. and I, I i love my dad for it mm. and i still hated him for, mm. yeah. for it yeah. because it was at those moments where i hated him but i also re- could tell he loved me mm. because i remember him beating me mm. and then him picking me mm. taking me, I, I, he knew i loved eating mm. so him going with me and buying sweet things for mm. me and then mm. we come back home mm. and then he starts massaging my back mm. which has of course a lot of lines because of the whipping <laughs> the strips <yeah. laughs> exactly mm. but at least i could tell that he was doing it out of love mm. not out of hate mm. that's the only reason why I, I i will never discount his influence in mm. terms of me being mm. able to have like an anchor mm. constantly mm. regardless of what i end up it, doing it literally means life or death exactly in in, in that situation you yeah. know as you're explaining yeah. if most of the other people who lacked a male figure yeah and the the the, the, the mother that they had was probably there's only so much you can do as a mom you know yeah. for boys it's different to raise boys if you're a, if you're a lady you mm. need that constant male figure yeah for you the male figure wasn't just a male figure it was a loving father it was a loving father and a disciplinarian a disciplinarian yeah. and a person who basically used what he had mm. which is church mm. the whip mm. the food and yet <laughs> all these things and yet that time your mom is in Nyan- Nyandarua. Yes. so this is the one this is the single parent at home yes um who is you know chief chief parent in yep. in, in in situations and it's interesting when you say that, because during the day he is at work mm. so what he did mm. which was quite annoying mm. is that he had spoken to everyone in the community yeah. he had the planted Mamboga, spice yeah the caretaker there yeah um the, the people who are selling water he told them what whenever you see this boy doing whatever Tell let me, me know mm. so he'll in the evening mm-hmm. he'll just pass by asking questions mm. to find out what he is going to beat mm. me mm. for mm. doing during the day mm. and i remember instances where Every time he went to visit my mom mm. or he basically his his mom mm. who was very sick mm. uh it was at those times where I started basically hanging out with mm. and I noticed that uh, people have, had actually become criminals in real life mm. uh, and I remember stealing a radio for one one, one person who later became my brother in law <laughs> oh yeah he used to have he used to have a shop mm. and we used to steal bread every day mm-hmm. and we started so slowly we started progressing and stealing other things mm. until we stole the radio mm. and my guilt consciousness couldn't allow me to to remain with that radio i had to return it mm. um and at uh, one time I, we went with my cousins and some few, some few friends to Huruma to steal at a grocery shop mm. and i remember i was still a very big boy mm. so i couldn't run as fast as the rest mm. and i was caught and i was beaten but they said i was too young so they couldn't so they released me mob justice or yes at that particular shop um so i i still have some marks in my body from that mm. particular thing that happened that mm. particular time it's such such a bug i mean the, you know when people talk about um stories and where people have come from the yeah. where you have come from and the kind of experience you have is genuinely like no other that I've had on this platform or or <laughs> or so many other people I know but somehow you came to change and your life is very different and what mm. you see and what you get is, is is very different and I'm even now more eager to mm. hear the connecting pieces okay. to what um your whole story would be so we we'd gotten to the point where you have um you you you, you have completed high school um and how ha- how is that period for you um so miraculously I was able to clear high school mm-hmm. I, would, I I say miraculously because when I was going to clear mm. um like the, my final exam mm. we really cleared all the school fees oh that's good so miraculously i still say miraculously because i yeah. never remember where mm. the money came from mm. to clear for that particular school mm. fees but i cleared high school mm. and immediately when i cleared high school um there was a program that started in madare mm. um so we were like around 12 people who had cleared high school at that particular time mm. around five males and three females mm. and so we were invited to that particular program mm. it was called trop mm. so we did uh a rite of passage basically mm. and a trope mm. and we were taught different things mm. um 
I wasn't interested. Mm. I literally I wasn't uh, I w- like li- I went there mm. because I'm very consistent in following up and mm. being present and mm. being there mm. but I never really was interested. Mm. But the thing about me is I always listen mm. regardless of how interested I am or mm. not. I always listen mm. and I get what I need to get. Mm. And what I got from that particular experience I got a certificate at the end mm. and I loved it and I, I still I still look at it and say this is this was one of my defining moments where mm. I, got, I got to understand and uh, connect to my purpose and my mm. purpose was quite clear at that particular time that I wanted to do something in my community mm. because I felt like if I don't do something then no one else will do mm. meaning that we'll still have young people dying mm. we still have girls yes. becoming prostitutes mm. or getting married quite young mm. and then losing their husbands to crime mm. meaning they have to take care of their young children the alone continues. so the cycle will basically continue mm. so i thought no i, ha- I want to do something mm. at that particular time i don't know what mm. because i have no experience mm. i'm not exposed to anything mm. but um, as a result of being able to go through top mm. i was invited to to be among us the people who would help implement a program called mm. Talents Alive. Mm. And from Talents Alive I was able to learn a few things about mm. administration, about operations. Mm. I was quite young. And I was <laughs> starting to do opera- uh, like PowerPoint presentations mm. which was an eye opener again for me. Like mm. I, I don't I have never touched a computer in my life. Mm. But I'm touching computers now. Mm. Um and as a result my confidence started growing mm. i didn't know still i just i said didn't know what i was supposed to do mm. but i was doing it whatever mm. it is i was mm. you're like showing my up. hands i was mm. showing up mm. i was engaging i was mm. learning i was mm. getting as much information as possible mm. Mm. um and and then when telling a live basically ended mm. uh, for me that particular time mm. it was really heartbreaking because mm. i didn't know what to do mm. Uh, fortunately uh, a friend of mine called Steve who mm. had met uh, five years Before earlier then. Mm. Uh, started something called Lepta mm. and he invited us basically to co-found it mm. and to register it together and to start mm. doing activities together mm. and I was given like a very senior title operations <laughs> manager mm. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know what this is mm. <laughs> I don't know how to do operations you have to learn on the job <laughs> so I had to learn on the job so mm. I, I embarked on a lot of self learning mm. um In, when I was 19 and 20 I, I think I read over 50 books mm. and not just reading I used mm. to read and implement mm. that's the thing mm. I read about everything nursing mm. engineering mm. any book I could get I, I could read mm. and I was like trying to clear books within two weeks mm. and trying to write down what I need to implement from what I have mm. just read so I, re- I read about management about leadership mm. about spiritual sp- spirituality I read mm. about different kinds of things mm. so I I really did mm. a lot of reading mm-hmm. those two years because I was idle in the office. Mm. I don't know what to do mm. with my time. And, you're and I'm spending manager. the whole day in the mm. office. I used to leave home at around uh, around 7 mm. a.m. without mm. breakfast. Mm. I didn't like being at home because mm. I didn't like my mom. Because mm. my mom had abandoned us. Mm. That's what I always felt. Yeah. And while I was in high school, she always blamed me. Mm. That we don't have enough because I'm paying school fees for you. Mm. I understand what she, the frustration that she had mm. but I always felt at that time that she never mm. loved me because mm. um even just going back home was it was chaotic for me so mm. I, n- I never wanted to spend time in my house mm. basically so I used to leave at 7 a.m. Mm. and come back home at 12 p.m. actually 12 a.m. <laughs> 12 midnight yeah 12 midnight oh my goodness basically mm. so i spent the whole day in yeah, the office work, yeah. reading mm. then in the evening i hung out with my best friends mm. at that time mm. and sometimes eat at their mm. home because i never liked going to my home i, I, I wanted to go to my home in madare to just sleep mm. i never wanted to see my mom mm. and all that uh, but now she, we are we are good friends mm. and uh, we we passed things mm. a bit later mm. I, i became a bit more mature mm. and i understood where she was coming from mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but that was so Lepta. Mm. Uh the right of passage mm. um really grounded me. Mm. As I started learning, I started becoming a bit more uh exposed to what I need to do mm. and what I need to become. So having been from I, I'm I'm trying to imagine you at that time having been from this um kind of background the most you've done is you know a lot of um you've be, you've been doing church mm. uh because you know dad insisted that you have to be in church yeah. 
you, 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 but you've tried out and you know, you've tried out as many things as can possibly be tried out by a teenager yeah. at that time. And somehow miraculously you finish school yeah. without debt. Yes. <laughs> and then now this period that you're coming now into, into beginning to get to your own, mm. where you have the choice mm. um, of beginning to determine and to think about where you're going in life. Yeah. Oh, how is that how is it phrasing you as a, a, as an individual what are you feeling like you've been called up to the next level like um i understand what you're talking about the programs the the the, the post high school kind of programs that mm. you um involved yourself in and also what you're saying about not wanting to go back um to the house but as an individual what are you beginning to think about yourself and about life and about career and about purpose and about giving back what what's happening what's what's bubbling under for you um so out of some experiences so mm -hmm. I, I remember telling you that i was i used to rap mm. uh, and I, I did that for four years yeah wafalme wafalme mm. during my high school years yeah outside school so i used to rap and i used to travel different places, mm. go to different churches and do mm. the music. Mm. That was quite exciting. That, that was exciting, yeah? Uh, it was really exciting. Mm. And it, caught, it basically caused me not to be in, the, in Madare most yeah. of the time, mm. which was really, really nice for mm. me at that particular time. Because again, just knowing Madare wasn't doing it for me, mm. I wanted to see more. Mm. But the other thing that also happened is, I remember I asked my friend to take me to a studio because mm. I wanted now to professionally record the songs. Mm. So we went with my friend, um, I used to sing with someone called uh, Kennedy. Mm. Um, so we went to a studio and I remember this was, um, we went to see Gideon Kimanzi. Mm. He was a producer at that particular time. Mm. He was doing production for Maxima Melodies. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, so he was really good mm. in terms of like, if you think about Maxima Melodies at that time, then mm. you think you want to work with their yeah. producer. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, the other producer was RK. Actually, it uh, yeah. was it, it was just two of yeah. them and in the gospel industry. Oh yeah, the rest one. Because uh, I was gospel. doing gospel, yeah. yeah. Um, so we we went to the studio and so Gideon told us, "You guys, can you do the a few songs? I want to just have a feel of what you do." Mm. Um, so we did three songs: mm. uh, "Atupenda," uh, "Tutashinda." We had like mm. very very nice gospel mm. songs, mm. according to. Uh, you guys exactly <laughs> according to uh, how we felt about those songs mm. and we had performed them for four years mm. and people shouted that uh, mm. they were really happy about the songs mm. now when we finished um i remember vividly i have never forgotten these words mm. but the producer told us um you guys i want you to go back and i want you to think about if this is what you're supposed to be doing and you remember that particular time I had already been exposed to purpose and mm. to these other things. Mm. So that also started helping me mm. uh, in terms of. So that was, it was heartbreaking, mm. but also very insightful in terms of what does he mean? Mm. Does he think I shouldn't be singing? And I already made a list about the things I want to do, mm. uh, how big I want to become as an artist, mm. where I want to travel, mm. how I want to dress. I, I had already made all this plan and he's mm. telling me, you know, you have to think about if this is what you're supposed to be doing. Mm. So that was quite mm. um, pivotal in terms of, mm. I left that particular room. Mm. We broke up in terms of the group mm. because we, I, I felt like I can't do this. From that conversation? From that, from that conversation, mm. I, we didn't even spend two days. Mm. I just stopped. He mm. continued for a while and then mm. we went into worship. Mm. Uh, to become worship leader, but mm. I stopped mm. and I started thinking. So I've been singing, mm. I've had a following, mm. I, have, I have dancers, my small bro and many mm. others mm. are dancing for us. Mm. But then I'm told, maybe I know, and I know I'm gifted. Mm. I love singing, I love rap, I love mm. music, I know. You play some instruments? I play the guitar, I play the keyboard at mm. that particular time. Mm. So I knew I was gifted, but mm. I, now if I can't sing, what can I do? Mm. And so when I joined Lepta, mm. we were doing a program called the Estras program. Mm -hmm. And this was primarily for girls, mm. take them back to school mm. or basically to help them continue with their education. Mm. And at that particular time, we used to have Mungiki in Madari. Mm. So they were the government, they were the order of the day. Mm. And so what, some of them wanted to make these girls their wives by force. 
And so what we were doing at Lepta is trying to create an escape mm. plan for these girls. So we mm. took them to a boarding school mm. in, in Sagana called All Saints. Mm. Um, as a way of basically just hiding them mm. from whatever it is that is happening mm. in this community. Mm. But this conversation mm. with Gidi happened almost at the same time. Mm. I thought, okay, so I'm gifted, I love music, I have a passion for music, what can I do with mm. this gift? Mm. Otherwise, it will just go to waste. And I discovered that I had a gift. Mm. That's why I was pursuing it. Mm. Um, so I went back and started thinking, so what can I do, what can I do? And then I ended up starting uh, an arts program. Mm. Um, cause of course later that particular time you're just focusing on girls mm. and my interest has always been to create spaces for arts, spaces for mm. arts mm. but also for boys mm. uh, that will allow them not to go back to mm. crime or to drugs and all those things. Mm. So we started an art program called Education Factory School of Arts mm. and initially we didn't even know how we were going to do it. So we just thought we were going to do a concert and that's it. Mm. But then before we did the concert, I thought, no, they need to learn something. Mm. So from the books, the very, the, from the very many books I was reading, mm. I already had notes mm. about things I wanted to teach them. Mm. And these are kids who are mm. in primary school, I think mm. class four, five, six, some, they're mm. very young, basically. Mm. Mm. I still call them, ask them, sit down, I want to teach you. <laughs> I want to teach you about management. Mm. <laughs> I want to teach you about, mm. and I started teaching them, basically. Mm. Um, and it was from the teaching, I. I started bonding with like being a teacher and mm. being a trainer mm. and facilitating things like management and mm. leadership mm. and just how to personal develop yourself mm. from whatever you have around yourself mm. and have to have like bigger vision mm. for your for your life and ambitions that were not common mm. in Madara. So these kids were really excited to mm. be there. Mm. And I remember I used to, to ask my friend who currently lives in Japan called Laban. Mm. I used to ask him, I, I need some bananas and mm. some biscuits or something. Mm. I used to give these kids something so that they can mm. stay with me the whole day. Mm. I don't want them to go anywhere. First. That's when schools are mm. closed or mm. like on Saturdays. Mm. So we used to buy bananas and biscuits and something. So they were spending time with me. Mm. Sometimes I used to do cashers, the whole nighters. Mm. Yeah. So at this particular time, I'm doing these things experimentally because mm. I, 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 no one is telling me what to do. Mm. No one is even guiding me on what to teach or what not to teach. Mm. So I'm learning on the job. So I'm training them what I'm learning mm. every single day. So when I read a book and I learn this, immediately I think about how can I make it a bit more practical and come teach it. Mm. And from RF, I was also able to to have a, a program for other kids also mm. who are not basically just artists and mm. musicians, mm. And, and and I used to do that quite mm. a lot at that particular time. Did you call it anything different? Um, so it, it was get the get to know it program mm. basically, and mm. and we used to do camps, mm. used to do different kinds of things. Mm. And I want to also mention something mm. uh, before we moved on because it's happening almost at the same time. Mm. This is in two thousand and six. Mm. Um, I I started dating mm. um, the, the woman that I am married to, mm -hmm. the mother of my kids and the mm. the love of my life, and the, the wife of your youth, and the wife of my youth because <laughs> I was really young when I got <laughs> married. Uh. Yeah, but um, so that's when we met. Mm. Um, she's from Madare also. She's mm -hmm. called Hilda. Mm. Um, and I. It was interesting how I, I decided that I wanted to date her. Mm. It, it wasn't, I hadn't planned. It was not by design. Mm. It kind of just happened. <laughs> that one of my friends whispered to me that mm. he thinks that Hila likes me. Mm. I, I don't think she did like me mm. at that time. So I went to see her and mm. we had a good conversation. And I liked the fact that she was also thinking like outside the box, outside my father. Progressive. Yeah, mm. progressively, basically, mm. about her future, about mm. her life. And I thought, this is really interesting. Mm. And I, I, I like to attach to people like that. Mm. Um, and so we started dating mm. uh, in 2006, and she was part of the people I was also training. Mm. Uh, she used to come for training programs. Cradle snatcher. You are, you are dating your teachers dating their students. Yeah, yeah, but I dated her before she, she joined the, pro, the training. She wanted to go through the training yeah. and to learn from me. And mm. she felt like I was really inspirational in terms of what I was talking about at my young age. Mm. And 
I wouldn't lie. I had very good uh, good support system. Mm. Is like Laban, mm. or Steve. Mm. You are you are there, mm. and many other people mm. who are a bit older than me, mm. who are always ready to give a helping hand mm. and some guidance. Mm. Yeah, and so over the last over the next four years, I was just doing a lot of uh, trial and error in mm. terms of teaching and training. And, okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, music, mm. whether it's music, whether it's dance, I was like like a manager for a dance group mm. i was doing mm. i was doubling many different things at that particular time mm. but i was also learning graphic design almost at the same time mm. so I was still teaching myself many different things mm. so i had like four years of what i would consider university because i didn't have prospects to go to school mm. after high school mm. so this had the four years after high school and i don't want us to rush them because they are super important okay so Let's go bit by bit. So the, the so you start dating. You, you see Hilda, mm. artist formerly known as Miss Kerebi, now known as Mrs. Ngari. Yes. <laughs> um, you identify. I mean, you both identify each other. That you know, some something gravitates to you to, each other. to her and mm. from from her to you. And how was dating um, a girl from the same community? Um, what was she doing at the time? What are the things that comp comprised your dating period? So when I started dating Hila, she was in Form 3. <gasps> Cradle snatcher, bro. And I, I had just cleared. <laughs> oh my God. I was like six months after high school. Okay. Yeah. That was early. It was quite early. You I were always, like, you if were I, I, when I think about it, I'm still amazed that it happened at that particular you, time. You, you wouldn't recommend your child to do the same? I'm not sure, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, but I still think it was too early in in, yeah. us, in a way. Yeah. But I feel like if it, it hadn't happened at that particular time, yeah, we wouldn't have. Mm. I don't think we would have mm. ended up in the same time and chance. Yeah, mm. but time and chance was for us to meet there mm. and then mm. Mm. Uh, for us because she had really mm. strong ambitions mm. about her future. Mm. I think she was just planning to leave Madari mm. altogether. So, but but she's she's so how are you dating when she's in school? Um, so we were both in, we were in sister schools. Like ah, sister brothers, boys. Sent to boys. Sent to girls. Sent girls. But you had so we had... live in Madare. Okay. Mm. We were all day scholars. Mm. And we meet on Saturdays mm. and Sundays sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Mo mostly on, on mm. Sundays. Because mm. she used to go to school on Saturdays. Mm. She was determined and ambitious mm. more than I was. Mm. Yeah. For school. For school and for, for her future. Ac yeah. Academic. And her career. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So that's how we met. Mm. And I remember I didn't have anything. So dating meant just walking together, mm. visiting Spending her time and together. Her home, mm. walking together mm. from church to school mm. to different places. Mm. Yeah. That was what dating was. Mm. Spending for us. quality time. Yeah. More quality time than mm. anything else. So it mm. wasn't really just about going somewhere or doing mm. things. Mm. It was about spending hours together, mm. literally. Mm. And her mom started noticing that uh, this was different. Mm. They're just having conversations mm. in the house, nothing else. Mm. It's just to talk mm. and talk and talk and talk for hours. Mm. And we became very, very good friends. Mm. That allowed us to, because we became friends for seven years before we got wow. married. Wow. We were together for seven mm. straight years. Mm. Yeah. At some, at what point, especially within those first four years after high school, yeah. do you feel like it got serious with her? Um, or was it always serious from the get go? For after, so so maybe our, so two years after we started dating, mm -hmm. when when she joined the program and mm. she went after she had cleared high school. Mm -hmm. She joined our program mm. for that first year. For uh, so Get to I, Know It or Recreation? The Get to Know It program. Okay. So we had a leadership program specifically mm. in the Get to Know It. I, we used to train people who are even way older than I was mm. at that particular time. Mm. But they still came and gathered with us. Mm. So we had like 22 people mm. who came every single wow. Sunday afternoon mm. for over a year mm. just to learn leadership from mm. someone who didn't even mm. had, have a clear plan about what they were going to teach in the mm. next session mm. and she was among us those mm. and uh, and every time she used to come to the session she wanted to do something extra mm. like to make sure that it was the office was clean mm. um you know, we had something to buy to, mm. she was really like supporting and helping mm. practically practically mm. uh, she felt like she's she wants to learn but she also wants to support me mm. in what i'm doing and i mm. thought no i want to marry her mm. i don't want to to waste this mm. um 
this friendship and mm. this love that she is showing me mm. and and I f- fell in love with her mm. completely and mm. I thought no I'll do everything possible mm. to to make her happy mm. but also to make her content with who I am mm. and the future that I'm trying to build towards mm. um and then we started like really planning the wedding mm. quite early mm. so <laughs> like we had like a very clear wedding mm. planned mm. Years yeah. before, way, way, many years. Mm. So mm. we, uh, yeah, it was interesting that we, even when we started like the planning of the wedding itself, mm. we only had two meetings because mm. we had already ah. figured out everything. <laughs> mm. So we never had like a committee, right? Because it was just two meetings too. Mm. This is the money we need. Mm. Where are we going to get it? Mm. And the second one was, this is the roles mm. during the wedding. Mm. You're going to do this. You're going to mm. do this, and that's it. Mm. Yeah, we never had meetings to plan. We yeah. already planned it out. Mm. Yeah. Because we were really close, mm. we had the same things in mm. common. We wanted, we know, we knew exactly what we wanted. Mm. So you yeah. get to introduce each other to each other's homes. Yeah. Um. So of course, coming from other end, just living near each other, mm. our parents knew each other. Mm. Uh, like my 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 last born and her last born mm. were, fr- were best friends were, mm. were, uh, since she, they were very young. Mm. Um, my sisters were friends, mm. so we were friends. Mm. So mm. we didn't really need to introduce. Mm. Until we go to a point where we said, "No, actually, want to marry your mm. your daughter." Mm. That was two years later. So f- four years dating. Mm. So immediately, I, I, I mentioned to her mom mm. that I pre- I would like to marry her mm. daughter. Mm. And so we had a conversation. She told me I, I didn't want her to finish university first. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I, I, when I'm telling her this, I'm like 20, 20. 23 mm. or 24. Mm. <laughs> I'm very young. Very young. I'm very young. Yeah. And I told her it's okay, but mm. give us a date so that we can start coming official. Mm. As work, we work wait for backwards, yeah. as we wait for the graduation. Mm. And so she gave us some dates. Mm. I went with a, a few friends mm. to officially mm. inform her that we want to get married. Mm. And then later on we had another date mm. for dowry negotiations. Mm. I was like 20, 24. Mm. When I started the dowry negotiation process, mm. um, and then we progressed until we got to the to the actual wedding, which was when I was 26 and she was 24, mm. and she cleared university. So you're, you're almost um, 20, 23. So you're almost 10 years. Mm. Uh, you're almost getting to 10 years of of, of 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 marriage, but many more years of knowing her. Around 15 years of or more of knowing her. Yeah. Wow. Basically, we've been together so seven years mm. of uh, dating and mm. eight years of marriage. Wow, fifteen! Yeah. That's yes. that's amazing. And at the same time, mm. and that's a lovely story. Thank you for sharing it, and mm. um, kudos to you, uh, Hilda, for putting up with <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and for seeing and for seeing the potential. Yes, the, the, there wasn't. It the, was just raw. The, the reef in the rough exactly yeah yeah that's really amazing yeah. um you are at the time you mentioned also um recreation factory you've talked about it a bit get to know it you've talked about it you mentioned you are also um sort of manager to a dance group yes mm-hmm. so the dance group was called xts mm-hmm. um the, <laughs> when i was in madare mm. when i was in high school they were still dancing mm. and i had like my own room mm in in Madare mm. and they used to use my room mm. to dance like mm. like a room without like, practice with earth floor, <laughs> basically mm. to mm. dance mm. when they couldn't find space in the mm. in, in a local church where mm. we used to go wow um so and my brother was there mm. and many other people from the same community that mm. I wa- really wanted to help and mm. nurture and work with mm. and so it just happened naturally mm. that when the time came mm. i started managing them and working with them and what did managing them especially given that you also now exposed to a lot of leadership you also exposed to you know other things uh, yeah. industry things you yeah. yourself have been to a studio with you know senior producers you've mm. done talents alive you've mm. you've you've like the kind of exposure you have around all of these things management yeah. leadership um artistry mm. is quite a bit so is that what you're offering to them so my management is a bit different because mm-hmm. it's really about just teaching them mm. i was just training them mm. every single day mm. not how to dance mm. i wasn't a dancer mm. i couldn't dance mm. so it, it, it was really about helping them navigate through life mm. learn the right skills mm. about self management mm. about taking care of themselves mm. 
about having like what you call righteous ambitions mm. not just living for yourself but mm. for mm. for your community mm. and we had a very clear idea about what, what we will do together mm. so we thought we will one day in the future we'll have like a, reso- a building that will act as a school mm. that will have different rooms and mm. everyone will do different things in that particular building mm. so we'll have a person who's teaching guitar mm. keyboard dance all these things and that. so i thought i am going to grow old with them mm. a lot particular time so mm. i was building them so we can mm. go together into into this future mm. of management mm. so I'm actually basically just teaching them management mm. skills mm. and and so when we used to have concerts they will be the people who was who are also organizing these concerts mm. with rf and mm. the recreation Education school of art, yeah mm. so we used to do concerts called reason to live mm. concerts and there were big concerts in Madare mm. but my goal was not, not to basically just do big concerts my goal was to give these people that i'm teaching a platform where they can actually utilize mm. the knowledge and the skills that they were getting in mm. class mm. and so and the teaching used to happen at night because they were <laughs> like so we used to meet on fridays mm. the whole night oh yeah because they were students because they were still students mm. in, some in primary some in high school so we used to just spend that night together mm. yeah and learning different mm. things uh constantly mm. praying mm. doing uh, then leaving them to pra- to actually practice the mm. dance moves mm. yeah and then they would go back to school on saturday go or, back to school on wow. saturday or go to a concert mm. on saturday afternoon mm. wow yeah so my work was to just ferry them make mm. sure that they were professional mm. by coming on time mm. Uh, dressing well mm. in, in in uniform mm. and also just getting what they need to get so they show up and how they show up and how they show up mm. and doing a good job mm. at mm. it mm. yeah wow wow yeah. <laughs> um and and so what became of xtz so xtz morphed into many things mm. so some members who were going to jamhuri mm-hmm. they joined a different they they together with some close friends in mm. school mm. formed uh, something we call the black blingers mm-hmm. who ended up doing a lot of things amazing mm. things mm. Uh, they won so many mm. awards mm. big awards mm. they became millionaires quite young mm. <laughs> they won a million shillings well they were still babies i would say mm. yeah, and they had to think about how to take care of mm. uh, many different things mm. um some of them went to film mm. so they ended up doing different things mm. Mm. yeah and somehow as they continued growing yeah. as they continue i mean that's that's amazing yeah. i think a lot of um our audience has also probably heard about black blingers just yeah. the fact that uh, there were there were what many two time award winners of sakata and and many i think katika and others mm. um but what you're saying is very significant that um the kind of time that you spent with them and also with the other 22 leaders in mm. in in uh, 22 young people in the leadership program get to know it yeah. you are not only exercising your own teaching facilitation um training gift mm. you're also raising people very deliberately yes. and not over a short period of time it's 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 what initially i thought i would basically train them for like three year periods yeah minimum yeah three year period that that was what in, was in my head no that, like but, I'll, but, but I'll that's like them for three years that's that's also really nice just yeah. by itself because yeah. that's a long term commitment you're making to someone it's like yes. a school period you yes. may, i mean campus life is especially if it's accelerated with the yeah. blocks it's three years exactly. so that's a commitment you're making exactly. to people for three years i thought yeah. you say three week program no no i've never done a short term program my and every God. time i did short term programs like camps and all that yeah. i wasn't satisfied yeah because i always felt like this was very exciting mm. but i don't know if these people will remember whatever I've taught a, them uh, th- th- within that, that yeah. short period yeah so um so when i did like the short term trainings I, i i i made sure that i had the same people come over and over and over mm. again so they can continue learning mm. different kinds of things mm. but then i decided this wasn't working mm. for me mm. so i basically did a long term mm. plan mm. before of course continuing with my own growth mm. and realizing that maybe I don't need to teach this I don't need to teach this mm. maybe I can consolidate and make sure that I have a one year mm. program mm. that is quite complete Which, that's what, what I ended up basically doing mm. yeah and I want to hear about that a little because yeah. I mean just also that reflection alone of um 
you know, we personal development, especially in spaces where there is like um, not in church, mm. in trainings that a lot of NGOs and CBOs offer, mm. the most that most will do yeah. is a ten week program. Yeah. And that 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 is what long term <laughs> looks like. for some people looks mm. like you know mm. ten week commit to every week you probably have a thingy that you do uh, together in the middle mm. and like a something that you f f plan together again around like graduation period but most of them from marriage planning to spiritual foundation to prayer to word to learning around development to peer education programs yeah. often. The, the most it's 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 a 10 week program which mm. would last like a term yeah of you know like a normal term in a high school yeah, or a campus weeks. situation mm. yeah 10 to 12 weeks yeah. but you are saying for 54 weeks or thereabout yeah you know it's commit you commit as the leader yeah and they commit also as the people as the students yeah and and you are creating a manual or a curriculum to follow for yeah. this yeah. and that's what you're seeing has long-term impact because the touch points the, yeah. the these other if i call them blitz events yeah. that uh you know probably those are good but they're good if they're part of a larger program exactly that they that, only work if mm. there was already a commitment mm. that is long term mm. yeah amazing reflections that you begin to have that that early yeah. you know from a practical experience but it's also resource intense it's it's a lot of resource intense but what happened is i remember um we i tried to fundraise mm -hmm. for lepta mm. i did a lot of and i was only operations manager for two years mm. and then everyone else left mm. we were like seven when we were starting lepta mm. but everyone else left mm. so steve mm -hmm. was in touch mm -hmm. because he was like the the, the like the the older one mm. among us so mm. but he was working into so mm. so he wasn't in Nairobi mm. so lepta was in my hands so mm. it was about me and what mm. i want to do with it and mm. what i can do mm. and what i cannot do mm. so of course i became the director mm. for lepta at that particular time mm. so mm. i was 20 mm. 2021 when i wow. became the director mm. for lepta mm. and so i had to figure out the future mm. and the, this was my future mm. i was thinking no, i don't want to do scholarships anymore mm. I don't want to do music anymore mm. or art programs. I mm. just want to focus on building leadership. Because mm. and the the interesting bit about that is because I realized that even with all the art mm. and all the education, without having like a proper plan about where you're going mm. and ha being able to be consistent mm. within that particular plan, then you're never going to get there. Mm. So you might have those things, mm. but then you're not able to get to. Mm to your destination mm. and I thought you know, maybe making a long term pr plan mm. where they actually constantly doing different things throughout the year mm. that are basically giving them confidence mm. but also experiences mm. will allow them to get there sooner mm. Mm. yeah and yeah. keep them at it mm. longer mm. and that's why the program is a bit longer mm. Mm. Uh, because it allows them to continue practicing what they are actually mm. learning mm. and we provide learning throughout mm. the process so, yeah mm. uh, and during those days we thought we needed funding mm. basically to give them a startup mm. a seed money because mm. they were learning about themselves about mm. their identity mm. and about um so they kind of did a strategic plan mm. at the beginning of the course mm -hmm. as, as a personal strategic plan mm where they come up with their vision, their mm. mission, mm. and set goals. Mm. Um, and so they kind of just have to almost come up with a company or an organization. Mm. And so I thought I needed funding for that. Mm. And so I started fundraising. Mm. So without any backing, without any knowledge, without any experience, mm. I started drafting proposals mm. out of nothing. Mm and telling people this is what we do, this is what I want funding for mm. specifically. And I never included salaries. Mm. Mm. in my proposals mm. they were never you, you, in my thought you're putting direct costs just direct yeah cost. this mm. is a training cost mm. these are meals mm. during training mm. um this is trainer facilitation and you're so putting when I'm at cost at cost mm. at cost like i'm mm. going to give no. steve a thousand mm. shillings mm. for transport mm. we are using 20 bananas or 30 mm. bananas mm. five shillings a banana mm. uh, everything was at cost mm. um and this is what we need at the end mm. like 5000 shillings per person to go start mm. up something mm. either register a company or an organization and start it up so our budget was like i only did like 60000 or 70000 mm. for 
like one a training cohort. Program, yeah. yeah. And I remember writing these proposals to to different kinds of banks, different mm. kinds of so I wrote to KCB, to mm. Barclays, to mm. to Standard, to different kinds of institutions that I was aware of at that particular time. And I remember just receiving letters regret. Uh, of regret. Mm. Constantly, mm. constantly. It was like a constant mm. heartbreak. And mm. I thought maybe I need to, I, 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 I'm already seeing the impact of whatever I'm doing mm. in the lives of the young people that I'm working mm. with. They're no longer in the streets. Mm. They're no longer in the slums. Exactly. They're constantly coming to learn. Yeah. So I can I can never stop doing uh, this. So I yeah. had to think, how can I make this program almost uh, like at zero cost, so that I can still continue doing it mm. sustainably. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But you have to remember, I still have a girlfriend that I'm dating, mm. and I'm still making mm. plans and mm. still have ambitions about yeah. my my own life. Yeah. And now that particular time, I had already moved out of Mathare. Mm. I was no longer living in Mathare. I was living in Isile. Mm. Um, and I, I was still ha- I still wanted to to do more mm. for my own life. Mm. I thought I don't want to stop doing lepta, but I also need an income. Mm. And, and so I started uh, learning very aggressively mm. how to do graphic design mm. and. Fortunately, I also got very good friends who mm. referred me or mm. gave me business mm. and I started earning mm. from designing. Mm. And so most of the time I used to use my money. Mm. So I would save some money mm. for my future plans. Mm. I'll give some money to my mom mm. because I still ate at home. <laughs> <laughs> it was way cheaper mm. to eat at home mm. because I was still living just across the mm. road mm. Um, and still save for my future plans. Mm and still use that money to buy snacks mm. and different kinds of things mm. for my training programs. Wow. And that's what we did uh, at the beginning of that whole leadership mm. training mm. Uh, process that we used to. So if, I mean, to say that you have invested your sweat and blood and tears into, in, into, into this, mm. into the leadership programs, yeah. wouldn't be an... Uh, you know, it wouldn't be an exaggeration. It's it's not a hyperbole. It's the truth. You have seen, you 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 not only caught the vision yeah. of a, the fa- like the founder's vision yeah. alongside yourself. Yeah. You caught that, but then you personalize it so much that you put your own resources into it yeah. to ensure that it can only run yeah. because you want the people. You, the, the kind of impact you're seeing in people is what you want to accelerate. Exactly, more. and make it a, actually a reality. What were the kind of numbers that you are re- reaching? I think the first time you mentioned through the Get to Know It program, you kind of first in the cohort that Hilda was in, they were like 22? They were like 22. That was the first cohort? That was the first cohort. That year is 2017? That was 2009. Oh, 2009. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so it then... It started in 2008, yeah. but it ended in 2009. All right. So the next yeah. cohort then, uh, the, the next cohort was um, the RF now. Mm-hmm. So we okay, because st- now we, we stopped the uh, Estas program. Yeah. So now it's the right. School of Art. Yeah. Um, we are teaching only thirty percent of art. Everything yeah. else is leadership, leadership <laughs> and management. Uh, that is uh, like the main mm. the main mm. content Actually, for that yeah. particular program. Yeah. In that program we had fifteen. Mm. That one I remember because you would call some people like. Is Oscar Arigi yes, to Oscar, come yeah. and train? Yes. Um, uh, uh, we we had um, several people also mm, from Avuno mm, who mm. will offer extra help. Mm. Like I remember, Kak Franklin came to Kasaran mm. and we had tickets for all the Actors, yeah. all, all the people that mm. we had in our program mm. and we took them to Kasarani to mm. see mm. Kak Franklin. To see it in motion. Exactly. Yeah. And, mm. and and they started dancing in different mm. kinds of forums mm. and different kinds. So we. We we had we had Sandra from mm. Kijiji, yes. who was very instrumental, and you, mm. she used to come to do mm. team building like mm. classes mm. and exercises mm. with, you mm. know, our training programs. Mm. So we we got a bit more exposure people, and, and leverage people. for yeah. the creation factory. Exactly. So who that's used a, to come for training. Mm. Mr. T came mm. to train. Mm. We had so different kinds mm. of people who used mm. to show up for our training programs mm. and even for our concerts. Mm. Exactly. The, the ones that were in Madari. We had the, like the biggest gospel mm. artists at that time were mm. performing who in this that? concert. So we had Emoji, Emoji yeah. we had Ekodida, yeah. we had Adioen. Mm. All these people mm. showed up for our concerts. Mm. So our mm. concerts were really, really nice and you, big. The concerts you do them annually or? We used to do two quarterly. every two year. Two year. Yeah. Two every year. So mm. in August and in December. Because mm. usually it's just said April is mm. a lazy mm. month mm. where people are either in school, mm. studying, or mm. 
yeah so we did those concerts during august and december very interesting yeah. and so the the artists mm. in the rf are getting a lot of exposure themselves yeah they are getting a lot of leadership experience a yeah. lot of management self-management mm. self-governance mm. yeah um and 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 you are also able at that's the second cohort of 15 yeah um so they do they like clear uh a year or um, are you at that time still thinking three so, years so those two for, for those two cohorts mm -hmm. they are the ones i thought i will do for three years mm -hmm. and i remember a very heartbreaking experience for myself at that particular time but but was very eye-opening also and very instrumental mm -hmm. in how lepta continued progressing mm -hmm. i remember steve came to from kisumu mm -hmm. and asked me how long have you been training these guys mm -hmm. uh, like rf i was, had trained them for like three years mm -hmm. And the other group for like two years mm. and he told me no no you ha they have to graduate they have to mm. yeah, so you can get other <laughs> others mm. Mm. I, told, i told him no i want to build something with these people mm. these are my people i want to mm. build something with mm. them there's this vision that we have that we mm. have to yeah uh, and so he gave me like five thousand shillings and he told me you have to organize a graduation immediately <laughs> so i had to like make certificates make certificates and mm graduate them and mm. they were also not really happy with it mm. and some some of them still mm. up until today are bit up that i ended up graduating this them. thing uh, quite early mm. on mm. and i told them i have to move on yeah to an, a new group yeah but but, but yeah and, and that was like in 2020 2010 okay we'll continue right back mm.